This video is about working scientifically. As you can see from the slide, this is the how of science. This video is going to help you if you are a Key Stage 3 student, uh, if you are a GCSE student. It's applicable to all the exam boards. Uh, it's fine for foundation or higher. Uh, it will help you with synergy, trilogy, or separate science, uh, biology, chemistry, or physics. So the best way to use this resource is to pause the video here and to actually um, assess yourself on your understanding before we go any further. So you could print this slide, you could uh, get a whiteboard or a scrap piece of paper and just make a quick note of these. But if you decide whether you are R, red, uh, this is what you can make the most progress on by using this resource. Amber, which means that you understand the concept, but you uh, might not have the recall, you might not understand what the term is, or green, that you are ready to apply your knowledge. So pause, take a minute to just decide right now where you are. If they are all reds, brilliant. That means that you are going to make a huge amount of progress in the next few minutes. Never be scared of assessing yourself as being red. It's the opportunity to make the most progress. So pause it now, do that. I'm going to move the slide along now. So uh, we're going to build this up in the form of a revision summary sheet. And here I've got a picture of a scientist who is starting with an idea. Uh, and I'm starting with this thought bubble here, I think. And this is a good point to highlight the difference between a hypothesis and a prediction. So a hypothesis is an idea. Uh, so for example, I think that light affects photosynthesis. Whereas a prediction is you actually stating that as you increase one thing, what will happen to the thing you are measuring. So a prediction from the hypothesis, I think light will affect photosynthesis, would be, I think the more light, the more photosynthesis will occur. And then from that idea, you formulate a question to answer. And you have to break that question down into variables. And the independent variable is the in variable that the investigator deliberately changes. So the I there is made big, this idea that the independent variable is what I, the investigator, are deliberately going to change. So then the next variable we need to think about is this dependent variable. And I've put this here on a ruler uh, with a scale on it because this is the idea that you actually measure this or you observe it. This is a good point to think about how you actually present your information in a table. The first column of the table is always the independent variable. That's a really good top tip as well when you are answering questions to do with this. Um, because if you're presented with a table, that first column is always going to be the independent variable. So even if uh, your mind blanks and you forget the definition of the independent variable, which you won't because you've learnt it really well using this uh, resource, then if it's in the first column of the table, it's going to be the independent variable. So you can use that location to help you. Uh, the dependent variable uh, is then the second column, or if you've got many columns because you're recording a difference or because you are calculating a mean from many repeats, um, it's going to be the one that comes after the independent variable. Other things that I've put here are this idea that uh, the units only go in the top of the column. And there's one way this table could be made better. So if you feel like it, you could pause and look at this in depth and decide. I'm going to tell you now how this table could be better. That independent variable could be ordered more logically. So each of these results could go from the lowest value to the highest value. So starting with the 720 and then so on, um, or the highest to lowest. I would always go lowest to highest because that's how you're going to do it if you are filling in a graph. Uh, and we can see that the axes are drawn with a ruler, uh, even better if they're done with pencil, but you get the idea there. So the independent variable is the first column in the table, 
we only put the um, units in the header. We don't put them the rest of the way down the table. And we should be ordering them in a logical order, going from the lowest to the highest. Sometimes you're asked to draw a table uh, with no data to put in. You wouldn't need to make up the data. It's just for you formatting the table, putting an independent variable first, then independent variable, and then recording the units at the top. Speaking of variables, oh no, we're not speaking of variables. Let's go to this bit here. Uh, there are two terms here, repeatable and reproducible. And I've tried to show on this diagram here that repeatable is if the same variables are repeated by the same investigator. Whereas reproducible is where the same variables are remeasured by a different investigator. So repeatable, same person, reproducible, different people. Perhaps you could think about the term reproduction. Uh, you need two separate parents for biological reproduction. So two separate people to reproduce data. Might help. Now, while we're thinking about these variables, you can have a continuous variable. So this is always represented on a scatter graph, which you usually do a line of best fit for. And this is where things are measured uh, along a scale. So with a height or a weight or something you would use a ruler or a scale or a mass balance to measure, a temperature, that would be continuous as well. So it can be any value along a scale. Whereas the other type of variable is categoric. So this is where things are one thing or another. So you could have that somebody is left-handed or right-handed, or that they have got blue eyes or green eyes or brown eyes. This is where they fit into one category or another. And you can see from the diagram we've built up there that categoric data is displayed on a bar chart. So when you start to uh, look at your data, you might spot some anomalies. So these are things that don't fit the pattern. So for example, on your um, continuous data set here, I'm plotting another point there. Just about managed it, that's not very big. Let's try there again. Hopefully you can see that. That is uh, an anomaly because it doesn't fit the line of best fit. It's different from all of the other data points and it doesn't fit the line of best fit. And we would show this on a graph. And I've not circled this very well at all. That should just be a circle. By putting a circle around it, mine looks like a very strange shape, but it should just be a circle. That's just my rubbish mouse work there. Sorry about that. You circle it and you leave it off of your line of best fit. And we can see from the placard that the investigator is holding up there, anomalies are left out of the mean. We do not include them when we are calculating a mean. And to calculate a mean, you would add together the results and divide it by the number of results that are there. And you would always leave the anomalies out of the mean. Moving on now. So in a conclusion to a... Um, investigation, you would need to say whether your results actually um, confirm or don't confirm your hypothesis and your prediction. You would state the pattern of your results and you would usually do this by quoting it. So in speech marks here, we've got that the lowest data and the result for that compared with the highest data and the result for that. And you would also look for any kind of mathematical relationship. So if you can see uh, that you have got a positive correlation from your graph or that as the independent variable result doubles, so does the dependent variable result double, then you could state that. But there isn't always a mathematical relationship, so you can't do that every time. And if that was the case on um, some data that you were given, it would be really, really obvious that there was a mathematical relationship. And then we have got our evaluation, what we'd want to include in an evaluation. 
this idea, is the evidence clear? Um, are there any anomalies? Could you explain any anomalies that you've got there? Perhaps um, you left the timer running for too long. Maybe it was difficult to read the um, temperature off of the thermometer because it got a bit steamed up from the beaker. Um, uh, never just human error though. Uh, if you just put human error, you don't get any marks. You've got to give an example like that you didn't start the stop clock um, as soon as you meant to or that you didn't stop the stop clock as soon as you saw the change in the dependent variable. Uh, those would be examples. Uh, this is where you talk about whether your evidence was repeatable or reproducible or whether you would do more work to see if it was repeatable and reproducible if you've not had time to take those measurements. And this is also where you would state what you could do to improve your method. So perhaps you could use a sensor which automatically um, takes readings every 30 seconds rather than you having to read the thermometer every 30 seconds. That would be a good method improvement. OK, and you're not expected to be um, a professional scientist. You're not expected to be able to identify everything you could do differently. Just pick one or two things that fit whatever your investigation is there. So let's go back to this uh, checklist now. Uh, have a read through the different um, statements that we've got there. And have a go at um, your pro uh, deciding whether you are red, amber or green for each of these statements that we wanted to improve on. Don't feel you have to fill in green for everything. That would be very unlikely after just listening to this once. You might need to go back and re-watch this video. You could try doing 10 minutes making a revision summary of anything you need to. So from our explanation there, you might be happier with what your definition of um, re reproducible is. That little cartoon of the same person compared with the two different people. And to make sure that you're going to remember that next time you need to review this, you could make yourself a flashcard that might be on something like Quizlet. It might be on paper. It might be that you're putting together a PowerPoint with a question and answers that animate in something that you can go back and regularly review because this knowledge is needed for key stage three science and for GCSE science as well. So learning it and investing that time making really good quality revision resources for it is really going to help. If you want to do screenshots of any of the images that I've done there, please help yourself. I'm happy for you to do that. But um, just make sure that you finish this learning properly by making revision resources for anything that you need to do. And finally, well done. So any progress you have made is good. It doesn't have to be green yet. If you've got from red to amber, uh, that's fine. If you are still on amber, but you're going to do the revision summary, brilliant. Really good use of your time. Uh, practice makes progress. Perfect isn't something we need to think worry about. It's the progress that we're interested in. And the more that you keep looking at this, the more progress you will make and these skills will build. Uh, well done. Thank you. Bye.